Hello. Uh, this is Friday's World News and things are still going wrong at my end but we'll see if we can get through it. This is Bruce Crasting with an article Big O and the IEA WTF. No need for translating the WTF. I'm surprised by the move by the President and the IEA. What's this all about? This is releasing the uh, oil to do something. Is it about the price of oil? Question mark. And then there's a decent note here. Before the announcement, WTI was sitting at about 95 bucks. That's a solid 20 bucks lower than it was at, it, at its peak eight weeks ago. So, if it was to the, to, oh, I've got to do this quickly. Right. Is it really about Libyan production? Question mark. Is it about punishing speculators? Question mark. You can pause and read if you want. Is it about teaching a lesson to OPEC? Is it about stimulating the US economy? Is it about stimulating China or Europe? Is this a desperate move by the administration to show leadership? See, all very good questions. Are supply and demand conditions such that this extraordinary move is justified? Question mark. Is this a big deal? Are we going to see more of this type of market intervention? I'm sorry to say that we might. What's been offered up is a drop in the bucket, so round two of this foolishness is a distinct possibility. In other words, if you've done it once with such light reasons for doing it, the chances are light reasons will soon pop up again and this will happen again. Did Bernanke know this was coming when he spoke with such great confidence that oil prices would soon retreat? BK reckons that this took months to put together so Bernanke knew it was coming and we live in a manipulated world. Go to the um, Financial Times and Martin Wolf article Why Austerity Alone Risks a Disaster and it's austerity of the world, and he's re referring to the BIS report that basically says austerity is a good idea for the Western world. He's referring to the charts on the left with this writing that I'll read on the right. Few doubt there is excessive private sector debt in a number of high-income countries. We live in high-income countries, probably. But how is it to be reduced? Big question mark. The BIS notes four answers. I've, I did the BIS document before um, my life electronically fell, fell apart and read the um, uh, BIS notes four answers and I read them. Repayment, default, higher real incomes and inflation. We've been there. Let us rule out the last, that was inflation, and focus on the first. Repayment means spending less than one's income. It's right if you, if you think about it. That is what is happening in the US private sector, see chart. I'll let you see the chart. Households ran a financial deficit, which is an excess of spending over income. It takes a bit of getting hold of, but it is all right of 3.5% gross domestic product in the third quarter of 2005. You can see it on the chart going downwards. This had shifted to a surplus of 3.3% in the first quarter of 2011. They're saving and they're above the line now. The business sector is also running a mod modest surplus. They're above the line. So to read the rest, I go to the next, um, which is 2C. Since the US has a current account deficit, the rest of the world is also by definition spending less than its income. It's all complicated, but it's all part of this MMT way of um, balancing sectors. So the exports, because they're lower than the import, means above the line goes up again. Leaving something must be below the line that's got to counter, counterweight those. Who is to take the opposite side? The answer is the government. This is what a controlled depression means. That's apparently what we're in, a controlled depression. Every sector other than the government is seeking to strengthen its balance sheet at the same time. The 
they're all above the line, so something's got to take it below the line. The BIS insists this is not good enough. Highly leveraged countries are running structural fiscal deficits, which must be eliminated as soon as possible. Fair enough, but where are the offsetting adjustments to occur? In other words, if they try all that, if they try the austerity, we will run a depression and it won't be so controlled. We want a nice, jolly, jolly controlled depression. Over another Financial Times article restructuring the Greek pie, those blue slices are the supranational bodies, the IMF, ECB and people like that. The yellow ones are Greece and Greece solid Greece connections and green is the market. So have a quick look at that and then we flip over to this. And this is who might hold Greek debt in a year from now. They're trying to manipulate it. You can see the supranational bodies have taken on board a lot more. They take on board a half and the Greek, solid Greek side is reduced and the market is reduced. Right, this is from an article, um, I forget which one, but all I wanted to read you was, um, <laughs> even coming to do this, my normal snipping tool blew up on me and I had to download another one. Uh, so I haven't got my little yellow pen, so I don't know where I'm going. Um, as we've highlighted, da, 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 da. yeah, our last paragraph. As we have highlighted before, but I couldn't highlight with my pen, a voluntary rollover, that's what they're putting in place for Greece, the French idea, is a liquidity solution rather than a solvency one. How many times have I said this in the last four years? It buys time for Greece to move forwards, uh, towards a primary surplus and stronger countries to ring fence their institutions. Even if a successful voluntary rollover is engineered, we note the ball would lie in Greece's court and further aid to Greece would likely be condi conditional on Greece delivering on the austerity measures. Thus, the base scenario remains of extend and pretend with a successful voluntary rollover pushing the situation further down the road. It's almost now, whatever situation comes up, we know they will extend and pretend and clink, 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 kicky down the roadie. Not the Greeks, but their creditors are bailed out. A nice tidy little article by Barry Ritholtz at uh, The Big Picture. Which ones did I want to read here? Let's go third from the bottom. Whenever you hear a bailout being discussed, look to see who it is actually being, who is actually being bailed out. It is not the Greek people or even the Greek government. Rather, it is the creditors of Greece. These are the banks mostly in Europe, primarily in Germany and France, but also includes Japan, China and the US. Pop down to the bottom paragraph. Greece has all sorts of problems, from their tax base to their economy, but the Greek people can tell when they are being raped and pillaged. The media may not get it, but the ones who seem to know the score are the rioters in the streets of Athens, Thessaloniki and Syntagma Square. <laughs> Good old Marshall Oil back, talking of MMT. Uh, I'll just give you the headline, Extend and Pretend Continues in the Eurozone. Everyone knows it. London Banker, we'll finish with the London Banker. Words cannot express how um, official this man is. This isn't just blogging. This is um, an old, respected, um, real London banker who now goes off and stops blogging, I think in 2009, to go off and advise the ECB. This is powerful stuff. This isn't just wild blogging. Um, and he writes, protect the bondholders, question mark. The latest twists and turns in the Greek bailout fiasco have combined with a disturbing insight into the FA, FSA, that's the, in the UK, the Financial Service Authority, here in the UK to make me concerned that the system may now be distorted beyond peaceful reform. In fact, the danger of harmful destabilisation may be much worse because supervisor actions reinforce 
poor outcomes. In other words, they're all not just in on this. This is what they all think is for the best. And the, even the um, supervisors are pushing through the protection of the bondholders. I am told that the primary objective of the ECB in Greece and the FSA in the UA, uh, UK is the same, protect the bondholders. But perhaps I am naive, but I did not realise that the FSA saw this as its primary mission until someone at the FSA blunt me to bluntly told me so, and someone in the markets confirmed it independently as only just and proper that this should be so. It just seems that this is what you do. I, I, it, I mentally got it as my next project to find out why this is how it seems to be, with everybody up there think, seems to think that bondholders must be protected. There must be a good, solid raison d'etre for it. Finish with a London banker in this article. I suddenly have a lot more sympathy for the Greek people than I did a fortnight ago. Come the revolution here, I may be on the streets too. Some will say that the Greeks are hard-line communists pining for generous state benefits and pensions that they haven't earned. Well, maybe so, but there is more economic justice in such a system with such objectives determined in a democratic process than in any system with a secret primary imperative to protect the bondholders. Democracy, no. They, whoever they are, the ones with power, know that the bondholders have got to be saved. And it matters not what anybody else, the masses, say about it. The bondholders have got to be protected. Why? We might know next week. If I can get my shit together. There's me for the weekend. And I'm going to have a hair tearing out weekend. Hope to see you on top form next week. Bye.